he was able to get himself, I don't want to say get himself recognized. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was able to recognize him on his first year of eligibility where it took LL Cool J six nominations because uh, he's been eligible for 11 years now. Why do you think that is? I think that was the most fascinating outtake about, you know, both of the induction inductions, excuse me, was, you know, so <clears throat> what is the gap between LL songwriting in, in hits and records and catalog and the gap between J's that make you think and not saying that Jay isn't deserving of being uh, a first time honoree. But what makes you think LL isn't a first or at worst case, Mike, at worst case, second time on a Like worst case for me is that L gets in second time around. Like, it appears, not to interrupt you, but it appears that to save face, they knew they were going to put Jay in there first time around. But they couldn't put Jay in there without putting LL Cool J in, so they put them both in at the same time. That's what it looks like. I don't know if that's what it was. That's what it looks like. And if that's the case, that's a shame um, because LL deserved to be in there. Honestly, I would say around the time the Beastie Boys got in there or before the Beastie Boys, I would put LL in there before the Beastie Boys and then the Beastie Boys and then it was Public Enemy, right? And then it was N.W.A. I think somebody correct us in the chat if we're wrong, but I think that it was it was either Public Enemy, then Beastie Boys, or Beastie Boys, then Public Enemy. Either way, I think LL has to go in like right after Run DMC. So, and I don't understand why he wasn't acknowledged in that way. Maybe his longevity, maybe the fact that, you know, he means other things outside of music when it comes to his acting career, his overall entertainment career. Maybe that's why he was slept on because Janet Jackson didn't get in first ballot either. And I don't understand that either. Um, yeah, I don't I don't get it. <clears throat> okay, so LL not getting in the first or second time is a problem. Sixth time is a damn shame. Janet not getting in the first time is just some fuckery. I don't know what the hell yeah. is going yeah. on or what people are thinking. Like, because you can go touch that on every level, and that's iconic. But but that's neither here nor there. As far as LL is concerned, though, Mike, I mean, and, and it seems like this is the thing that we've really been covering lately in the past month or so here at According to Hip Hop is, is that, like, you know, I'm starting to feel a certain type of way. Like, we haven't valued LL enough, and we have something to do with it taking him so long to get in here because I'm just going to, I'm going to pull my own card on this one, Mike. When you told me that he had been nominated this many times, not only was I was, I was floored, but as a head, I was ashamed that I didn't know that we should have been pushing for L more. You I, well, you know what? I mean, not to pat my own self on the back. You when, have. When got, Tupac see, got free, inducted you first. Knew you were going there. Yeah. Yep. When Tupac yeah. got inducted uh, as the first solo artist, you and know, it kind of, it kind of, um, you know, open up a light in my brain like you know what why is this happening and LL's not getting this acknowledgement and I did, at that point that's when I started realizing how many times the LL, LL excuse me had been nominated before so I wrote an article basically saying that you know LL should be the first hip hop solo act inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and not Tupac and that was nothing you know against Tupac it's just we can't skip steps here you know what I mean and, and it's interesting that this is the thing, and I think this is the interesting thing about LL's career. For whatever reason, artistically, he's not being valued, um, and that's what it is. And like artistically, I think that you know, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five they got in because of the innovation with Grandmaster Flash and the you know the scratching of the turntables, all of those things. Obviously, the impact of the message. Well deserved pioneers, people on the ground floor of hip hop. You get that. Same thing with Run DMC. I think they admired the artistry of what they brought to the game, taking hip hop from the streets to that next level on the mainstream level. You know, tougher than leather, yada yada boom. I think the innovation of the Beastie Boys, they respect it. Um, the innovation of Public Enemy, NWA. But for whatever reason, 
they don't respect they didn't seemingly respect the artistic nature of what LL brought to the table as an artist and that's the only thing I could think of because I feel like and that's why I mentioned Janet Jackson I think because she's a pop star they feel like there's a certain level of artistry that is not comprised in that and you don't get that consideration so I'm going to tell you something and, and this is actually something that I've been emanating on this show for a while <laughs> which is that it's hard to write a rap song. Writing rhymes, lyrics, because of how our format and structure is made from a beat machine in 16 bar format, the compression of words into that format for three sixteens or two twenty fours with a four bar hook doubled up or a full eight bar hook or a four bar bar, bar hook with a bridge. You, you, like any way you want to do the math, Mike, it's hard to do. Writing a rap song is hard to do. And actually what LL does best is one of the things that gets understated most in hip hop. And I think he's just not being recognized creatively because people don't understand how hard it truly is to write these legendary, iconic hits that he's written. It goes understating because the craft of hip hop songwriting gets understated and he might be our best songwriter. Yeah, I mean, especially so, if you okay. count, you know, what so time speaks, period he comes from. Right, so it speaks to the craft being Doc and thereby him being Doc. Because I, think I see again, it all the time because it's like people look at rap like, like, no, that shit's hard. I think, again, though, I think us as hip-hop connoisseurs, followers, listeners, you know, journalists, fans, we don't appreciate LL Cool J. I think LL Cool J might be the most underappreciated hip-hop artist that there is. When you factor in everything that he's done, what period he comes from, as long as he's been able to sustain the hits that he has in different eras, and the fact that he even came up with the term GOAT, and we laughed at it. You remember that? When that happened in uh, 99, 2000? I was looking at him like he yeah. was Yeah, and it's like, no, it's well-deserved, because the media had continuously told us that, you know, Biggie and Tupac were the greatest ever, right? And when mm -hmm. LL jumps out of it, like, look, I've done way more than what these guys have done. I'm still here. I'm still doing it. I'm the greatest of all time. And owning that, it's like we brush that off. And the fact that people brush that off and don't even know that he is the creator of the term GOAT lets you know how underappreciated this man is. And I think that him being nominated six times and not getting in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is indicative of that. And the fact that Jay-Z went out there first time around, as he should, gets in there, they let you know how underappreciated the LL Cool J is. And so, <laughs> it's unfortunate. So that's what I mean is it's like, and here's where the thing where I've even said to somebody who loves hip hop, you know, and actually journalistically and connoisseur wise, you know, we're, it's almost being disrespectful to him at this point. It's not even under appreciation. And it's like, so we kind of need to like check ourselves. Like, we, we, you know, that's why I said, no, 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 I'll pull my card first because I started feeling like, hey, we need to be talking about this. Well, when you say, you know, and some people in the chat are saying some things that they don't think that LL is the best songwriter. When you say songwriter, are you talking about hit records? Or, you know, we're talking about, put that in context. When you say LL Cool J is the best songwriter in hip hop, put that I said, in context. I said, I said arguably. Arguably, because okay. Because because what I'm saying is, is is that if you can name somebody else, Mike, who over a span of I would say three separate eras made big hit records in those eras, and then you can go to those albums and hear fully fleshed out songs. That's what I mean. Is that he's a songwriter? Like when you go listen to a LL Cool J album, you don't get a track with one verse of him spitting for no. a minute and 30 seconds and then the song is over now do you no you're right you, you get verse verse hook verse all the way down the line 
And so when you look at how many times he has hit his mark with the level of songs that he has made, because Mike, and I said this before, it's like, no, Jay-Z doesn't have more iconic hits than LL. We gonna have to get Biggie and Tupac out just to compete with this dude on that. Uh, Shamario Patterson says, what do you mean as Jay should? I'm sorry, but LL should have been there way before Jay. I agree with that. We're but saying, I do think that Jay Z should have been first ballot too. Yeah, Jay's first yeah. ballot, and so is L. That's yeah. what we're saying. We're saying they both should be first ballot. So L should have gotten in before. This and is the thing, though. If Jay didn't get in there first ballot, we would have all made a fuss about it. What we sh we should have made a fuss about the fact that LL didn't get in the first time. Right, Mike. That's so, the bottom yeah, line. That's the bottom line. So some of this. Not all of it, but some of this is our fault. We ain't been pushing for L enough. We haven't been giving him his just due. Although we look upon him as a legend, and although he's respected, we're not giving him enough. Yeah, because, I mean, when Tupac got in there before him, and I caught a lot of flack for that. When Tupac got in there before him, I made a fuss about the fact that LL wasn't inducted. I want to say maybe the year before that. Because I want to say it was N.W.A., getting in before him that really got my antennas up about this like wait a minute we're skipping some things mike yeah I'm certain that i argued with you on your post about the tupac thing in favor of tupac of course i'm pretty right. certain you argued on social media about that when you posted that because you've been saying this for a very long time on a personal level yeah i'm yeah. glad he's finally gotten in but i still think that you know at this point i don't want to say underrated because underrated, I don't think fits LL Cool J, but he's definitely the most underappreciated hip hop artist ever. How about this? He's the most underappreciated of all the legends. Because he's still legendary. It's not even a conversation about that. I mean, we even had the conversation the other week the fact that KRS One didn't even mention LL's name when they were on the uh, Versus stage. And so, Mike. And, and that was odd. And then it makes me think, like, well, are his peers disrespecting him a little bit? Because then I saw yeah. the Slick Rick, Kane, and Rakim photo, and I'm thinking, like, where's L? Well, you know, they're on tour together. So, uh, I mean, L's yeah. always been in a different stratosphere. He's slightly younger than them, too, right? And I only say that and got there before them. Yeah. And I don't say that because L, literally, when he promotes Rock the Bells, mm -hmm. he brings up how he wants Rakim and KRS-One, and Kane, and Chuck B, and Ice Cube looked at the way that Lennon, and Bowie, and, and McCartney, and like, like in all these other white legends and alternative and rock fields are looked at. You know what I'm saying? The way Ozzy's looked at. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like he wants that for, 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 for those artists, and it, and it just kind of seems like also, too, not only are we doing him a disservice, it almost seems like some of his legendary peers may not be wanting that for him the way he wants it for them. I find that to be problematic. I think that, you know, at this point in hip-hop, hip-hop being so competitive, and obviously New York's just a competitive city, period. You know, you got to compete just to live up there. And I think a lot of those guys have the, that mentality ingratiated in their mind, which kind of prohibits them from actually working together, even at this stage in their careers. You know what I mean? Think about it. They're on tour together. Why are we not getting records with these guys? <laughs> I mean, because they probably just do their shows and go their separate ways. You know what I'm saying? Go home or whatever. Uh, go back to their families. But, no, I mean, LL's the perfect ambassador for that. And I love the fact that LL's doing this Rock the Bells in the way, he's, in the way that he's doing it. Um, you know, he even shouted out Kumo D in his speech, you know, and shouted out Treacherous 3, Cannabis, and people that continuously pushed him like, Cannabis got a mention in a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame speech. You know, it's um, LL's clearly humble and he's a very humble individual being as big and as grand as he is and everything that he means to the culture. But we still need to appreciate him more. I've always said that maybe we need an LL Cool J biopic for people to get it. You know what I'm saying? He's almost been too good for his own good. I remember when he made the cover of Vibe magazine with his wife and his family, and he was even talking in the article. He's like, "Yeah, he's like, I'm probably the only rapper that like still has like a Honda Accord that like I drive." 
You know, like I remember him saying that. So the humility's like always been there. Like he was a legend then, Mike. I, I was, you know, I mean, like I remember L from when I was a kid. Me, LL was a legend when I was a kid. Was a, <laughs> a LL's been a legend since like what, 1990 or something? Right. I mean, Mike, yeah, he's That's been a amazing. legend since I've been a kid. Like he's been Uncle L almost like my whole life. So it's like, you know, we just need to start saying his name more. You know, 